Faster drug discovery, complex multi-robot industries, hard-to-hack digital networks, environment monitoring like never before, and of course, the zoom and droom of self-driving vehicles. Quantum technology holds the potential to redefine the world as we know it. A hundred million times faster, quantum computers just take seconds to complete a task that would take the most advanced supercomputers tens of years to accomplish. What's more, NASCOM says the revolutionary technology can add at least $300 billion to India's GDP by 2030. That's not too far out. That would be a quantum leap, quite literally. And to make it possible, India in 2023 announced its very own national quantum mission with the cabinet approving an outlay of 6,000 crore rupees, half of which will be deployed in setting up four technology hubs with a clear target. Bridge the global gap, catch up with advancements and help India achieve self-sufficiency in quantum technology. From the West to the Indo-Pacific, nearly all major economies have rolled out their national missions and programs. Over 30 governments have committed more than $40 billion in public funding to quantum technologies which will be deployed in the next 10 years. This as per a report by IQM. China tops the list with an estimated budget of $15 billion. The U.S. has committed nearly $4 billion so far under its national quantum initiative. And let's not forget, the country is home to Google, Microsoft, AWS and IBM, all leaders in quantum computing. India is at least 10 years behind but has taken the first big step, becoming the seventh country to have a dedicated quantum mission, apart from the U.S., Austria, Finland, France, Canada and China. The big question we want to ask on the show today, what will it take for India to turn this vision into reality and how can this mission bring together the country's talent, technology and tenacity to fulfill the mission of a made in India thousand qubit quantum computer. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me on the program today are two men who are at the forefront of India's quantum leap. Joining us on the show, Ajay Kumar Sood, the principal scientific advisor to the government of India and Ajay Chaudhary, chairman, mission governing board of the National Quantum Mission, Jet and appreciate you joining us Thank here you. on the program. Mr. Sood, why is it so necessary for us to get into the quantum race today? See, quantum technology is a disruptive technology because what we have been living with, uh, with the classical computers and the way uh, communication with the present cyber security, all this has to be revisited when this quantum technologies are really everyone's uh, game. Mm. So actually it is a t lead time for us to be ready and make sure that India, we are quantum safe mm. when this technology is uh, fully developed. So right now it is in somewhat nascent stage, right. but uh, it will not be very far when very powerful quantum computers will become available to challenge the available uh, crypto uh, systems or the security systems we have right now. Explain to us where we are on the curve of quantum readiness today. So basically, uh, as, per, as per the plan that we had created, we are on track. So what we had decided to do was to ha set up four thematic hubs in the country. Mm -hmm. One for computing, one for communication, another for sensors, another for materials. And we then put out a request for proposals from all researchers, all institutes in the country. And that request for proposal happened 20th of January itself, a right. few days after the meeting. The response has been phenomenal, okay. I must say. Okay. So we are all very happy with the kind of response that we have received. Where are you getting the response from? From various research institutes, researchers, IITs, TIFR, mm. IISE, you name it. Everybody is interested. Okay. So this is such a great thing to happen hmm. and what we are now working on is shortlisting from there okay so we, we are sifting through those applications we will come up with the right applica with the application that we believe are good hmm. then we will have a group sitting and deciding on looking at the technical aspects of those people who have actually applied okay and then at some stage by about august we would have finalized who will run each of these hubs and each of these hubs will be actually Section 8 companies mm. with full authority and full funding and everything provided to them. So they're totally independent. Parallel to that, we are setting up a, a organization in Noida, mm -hmm. which will be the coordination system for the whole uh, PACTRO program. 
So we are moving quite fast forward and in addition, hmm. we've done something extra. We've also started talking to startups. Okay. So we believe that there is a great opportunity hmm. for our startups also to get into this area. And if we do this parallelly and get them the right mentorship, hmm. I think we can be extremely successful. How you expect the startup ecosystem to contribute to the quantum mission? What's the ask? What are you hoping for? See. Uh, startups uh, right now in India, we have about 45 startups which are working in different parts of quantum technologies, mm. be it uh, quantum computers, quantum communication sensors and devices. So what uh, these startups have to see, what is it they can do which mm. is innovative and will have the leadership uh, potential. Okay. Because this is not in isolation. Mm. Many, many countries are working, as you said in the beginning of your program. So we have to see that the startups also have connect with our academic partners okay. who will be doing the very fundamental work, well, let's say from TRL mm. 1 to TRL 4 or TRL uh, technology readiness level, right. so that these uh, startups have a very high chance of success okay so this will be actually uh, we have to do it together so uh, people will not give you the technology just by ask for sure. asking so the startups uh, uh, good news is that there are already few good startups who are really uh, in the race uh, almost internationally competitive mm. But that number has to increase. Just this morning, Ms. Amitabh Khan tweeted saying that over the next 18 months, India is going to uh, have about 10,000 GPUs in place. So we shouldn't worry about processing power and processing capacity. Just build on that for the benefit of our audience. You know, the importance as well as the challenges on being able to build that out and get to that stage. See, that's fundamentally for the classical computers. Hmm. And that capability is required in India for working on artificial intelligence. So that's the plan that the government has put together. And they are going to create this infrastructure so that startups and organizations in India have the infrastructure mm. to use for AI applications and developing AI mm. further. So that is a totally separate area. The quantum computing is totally new. Mm. This is something that we will work through the mission to create quantum computers in India. Already, a couple of institutions have achieved certain level of capability. Mm. Like, for example, a couple of institutes have in, in India itself have created six qubit computers already. Okay. So it's not that we are starting at zero. Ah. For the last three to four years, METI and DST had programs inside which quantum was part of those programs. Mm. Okay, cyber physical systems, mm. etc. And therefore, that capability is already happening. What are the critical aspects that you believe we need to prioritize? Where is the gap the widest today that we need to bridge? See, actually, in certain areas, the gap will be one or two years. In certain areas, the gap will be four to five years. Mm. In certain areas, will be eight to ten years. See, for example, materials is a very big area. Yeah. That will take time. But the biggest issue is that one major area, which is communications, mm. is something where a lot of work has been done in the country. All right. There are startups. There is a couple of startups who are at technology readiness level eight and nine today. Okay. Okay. And they can actually compete globally also. Mm. So this kind of work that has happened and oh, some of that work has actually been started from institutes. Right. It's not that they did it on their own. Right. Let's say there's a startup in Bangalore. Mm. They actually came out of IIT Madras. Mm. And IIT Madras originally created all that capability mm. for them to take off. So IIT Madras would have given them TRL level 3, TRL yeah. level 4, and they took it and to TRL level mm. 9. Mm. So that's the way it has to be done. But what about public-private partnership? And what do we need to be mindful of, especially in the context of building out the quantum computing ecosystem and the quantum mission sure. in India, and especially partnering perhaps with global companies because they at this point in time have taken the lead? Yeah. See, quantum computing is slightly a complex game. The reason is that all around the world, it is not yet clear which technology will take over. Mm. For example, in quantum computer, we talk of qubits. Right. Uh, in classical, you talk of bits, zero and one. 
but in a qubit it can be simultaneously in zero as well as in one mm. with some probability mm. now these qubits can be uh, uh, actualized by many processes mm. many physical things it can be superconducting josephson junction it can be spin based quantum uh, 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 qubits photonic based right three or this ion based sorry mm -hmm. a very uh, powerful again a system all these four or five uh, pathways are being pursued so all around the world there is a uh, 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 still not clear which one will really be there right but the most important thing in quantum computer is the fault tolerance mm. even if you have qubits which are physical qubits uh, which you can make in a, a lab that is not enough because the these are probabilities things in mm. quantum mm. so the question is what is the fault tolerance which means if you do 1000 operations mm. how many errors you will get mm. right now you will say oh i'll get 4 to 8 that is totally unacceptable you now last month they have reached one error in 100000 uh, this has to come to one in billion right then all this power of quantum computing will come now uh, coming to your question mm. this means a tremendous amount of investment mm. in uh, these technologies uh, in our quantum mission we will nurture uh, uh, on some groups but this will be at a r&d level mm. because if you talk of spin qubit which is based on let's say silicon right. technology now there we are still at a 2 qubit mm. now if you have to take 2 to 25 lot of work is involved mm. it's not just uh, making it and just putting in a yeah. cryostat it's many many more things so the fault tolerant error corrections Uh, quantum algorithms mm. all that will come in and that's where the public private partnership mm. will be very important so we need to have companies equivalent of what us has yeah. uh, ibm microsoft google huh. can they see the future mm. such a bright future mm. it is like the computers in 1960s when nobody thought that the laptops will be yeah. tomorrow huh. uh, there quantum is at that stage so these people have to be visionaries ha huh. in public sector to really invest in it